Hello guys, welcome to a video about uh, Unreal Engine 4 interface. Okay. Um, interface is not a feature that you have to use, but it, it can be really helpful for two reasons. One is that it decouples uh, the actual type of the class. And all you have to, to all you have to know to know to interface with any object is that interface class. Another thing is uh, because of that reason, it can be super flexible. So you can swap out stuff. You can use different classes all the time, as long as it does implement uh, the interface. So let's take a look at how to do that in Blueprint first. So uh, I'm gonna just maybe do it in the third person um, CVP and Blueprint, and then we're gonna go. We're gonna go create a Blueprint interface. Okay, so Blueprint and then Blueprint interface. I call this guy trigger interface. Okay. And then instead of it, I'm gonna go create a function. Okay. So we have a new function here. I'm gonna rename this guy to trigger. Okay. And then for the triggered, uh, we're not gonna have anything, but we can have some input and output if we want to do that. But that's actually just the interface. Uh, or here in the list of these functions, this is going to be the list of the things you wanted to be able to call through the interface, but you don't actually have the body here in the interface. Okay, so uh, to use interface, you can use or uh, you can use this interface or implement this interface in any actor. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to create another blueprint class. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a actor here, an actor here. I'm going to call this guy um, BP jumper. Okay, oh, jumper. So I'm just going to make it simple so we can just see the feature here. So the BP jumper will have, um, let's try just a static mesh with a box. Okay, now here in the even graph, or actually in the class settings, I'm gonna to go to the interface here and implement uh, the trigger interface. Okay. All right, so now our BP jumper does have implemented the trigger interface. That means it can actually do the actual thing the, uh, the functions in the trigger interface does. So what we can do here is we can just right click and type in the triggered. I can see there is a uh, and uh, add events called event triggered. Okay, and this event triggered will be called when uh, someone asks the PP jumper to do triggered through the interface. Because the trigger interface have this triggered uh, function here, so whoever goes through this triggered function in the interface to interface with PP jumper, it's going to actually eventually call this event triggered. And we can do this. Uh, we can add a uh, word um, actor word offset. Okay. And then we just make it go up 100 units. So, as simple as that. Compile and save this. All right. Cool. Now, let's create an actual trigger. So, a new blueprint class. I'm going to call this guy a uh, BP trigger. Okay. And in the BP trigger, uh, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add a um, variable. I'm going to call this guy triggered actor. Okay. And then I'm going to go make it an actor reference. Okay. Compile and save that. And make it public. Also, I need a collision box, a box collision actually. <laughs> And just to be able to visualize where it is, I'm going to add a static mesh and make it uh, a cube also and make it just really low and go down. And I just maybe shrink it this way. All right. Cool. So uh, let me grab the box and do a uncomponent beginner overlap event. And then just to be very simple, I'm going to just try to cast the overlapped actor to a pawn that should guarantee in our case just going to be the player and if that's true then we're going to ask the triggered actor to do the triggered interface call okay 
All right, and compile and save this. Now back here to the environment, I'm gonna go drag in the trigger and drag in a jumper. And then grab the trigger and then go to the triggered actor and just use the eyedropper, eyedropper to pick the box here. Go ahead and play and then go here. You can see the box jumps up, right? So what's happening is that when our player overlaps with this trigger box in the actual implementation here, it's gonna ask the triggered actor, in this case, that will be our jumper to do this interface call. Uh, what it does internally is gonna, it's gonna try to ask, okay, this triggered actor, in this case, again, our jumper, do you implement the trigger interface? If you do, then I need your triggered function to be called. Okay, and in our case, the jumper's triggered function is implemented here, which offset uh, the actor up 100 unit on the z direction. So it's basically what the interface is. So why do we ever want to use this? Because there could be other things you want to be able to trigger. Okay, so let's say I want to trigger something else, another actor that is of a different type. Maybe it's gonna be BP rotator. Okay, all right, I'm gonna double click to open that. And for the BP rotator, I also want it to be able to be triggered. In this case, what I will do is also go to the class settings and also implement that trigger interface, okay? And then also implement that triggered, um, oh, not this one actually, triggered uh, event, if we do have any. <laughs> need to compile this, I believe. Yeah, now we have the event triggered. Okay, and then we can do like add um, rotation offset or add actor word rotation. We're gonna add it 45 degrees on the Z direction. Compile and save this. Now we can drag the rotator. Uh, actually, I need some visual, so I'm gonna go to add static mesh component and also use cube and drag this guy over here. Okay, now we can hold it down out and drag to duplicate our trigger box. And then this time we want to pick the rotator. Go ahead and play. Now you can see the jumper jumps up, rotator rotate for 45 degrees, so on and so forth. So, right. Um, the benefit is that those trigger only knows that they are trying to do something to an actor, right? Both triggers just want to do something with uh, the triggered actor is actually only an actor to them because the type is actor. Okay, but when it's triggered, it's just gonna ask this actor, "Do you implement this triggered interface? If you do, do your own version of the triggered event." And those two actors all have their own version. The jumper jumps and the rotator rotates. Okay, so that way it can be really flexible. You can drag in any actor. It just has to be an actor and it just have to be implementing that interface and have its own version of that interface call. And then what's gonna happen to them is all gonna be up to them. And there's no entanglement between the class type and the trigger, the trigger and the class type, they don't even know who each other is, right? So this guy doesn't know what this is. This guy doesn't know what this is either. All they have is this in-between interface that takes care of the communication, all right? So that's gonna be the whole idea of interface and why it's really useful sometimes. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about how to do this in C++, okay? See you next time.